Hi and welcome back. Today's episode is about multiple linear regression in R. We will talk about multicollinearity and how to get rid of it. What is multicollinearity? What are the steps of regression? How to fit a linear regression model? How to split data? How to build models and how to compare them? How to make predictions and how to detect multicollinearity? All this and more we'll discuss right now. Today's episode is about multiple regression. One of the main topics when we fit a linear model is to detect anomalies. In this case, it's multicollinearity. Multicollinearity is a problem when we are facing two variables or more explaining the same. Let's see next. First of all, we need to use some data. We're going to add some data. And for that, we need some libraries too. In this case, we're going to use tidyverse for data manipulation and visualization. We also need Caret. What is Caret? Caret is a library for machine learning workflow. Let's load all these libraries and we prepared our data. In previous episodes, we were talking about this data is about median house price in Boston. For that, we call data Boston and we can check certain information about that, the data we're working with. As you can see, MED is the median value for a given house with certain characteristics as you can see. For example, we need taxation, the taxes that house will pay or is paying, and age, chas, this means about if it's near that Charles River or not, crime indices, for example, black, the percentage of Black, a black community there. There are certain variables, but in previous videos we were talking about this data, so we're not going to talk further about it. And as you can see, something important. I just mentioned Charles River, for example. And as you can see, the variable Chas is a dummy variable. That means there's a binary. So we're talking about one or zero. It's near the Charles River or not. But it is already as an integer, so we don't have any problem. The other variables are numerical, so we don't need to prepare more the data. The next step in order to fit our model is to split the data into training and testing data. You can see here we're going to use a function from the caret library called data create data partition. That is going to create two subsets with this split 80% for training and 20% for testing. Given our variable med, the function is going to create certain indices, as you can see here, 407 observations for training and the rest for testing. Once we run this, it will say Boston is my data set, my original data set, and test data is going to be my testing data. As you can see here, we have a negative sign. That negative sign is saying, is saying don't take this index. We run this part too, and now we are ready to execute and to fit a model. Do next, we can fit this model using the function lm for linear model. As you can see here, we have the formula med, our median house price, and we have the till, and we're saying with this dot, take all the variables. We're not discussing here if that variable is significant or not. We're just talking about multicollinearity, that's an important here now we are focusing on that yeah, but you can see here train data this is the data we use to fit our model the testing is for validation of course you can see here model one we fit it and now let's see how our model was fit summary we run summary and we can see certain details here for example multiple r squared r squared is the coefficient of determination that means that we are trying to know how much can we explain of all the variance of the problem? In this case, the median house price. We have around 74% of explanation. Is it good or not? Well, when we are talking about the regression, we have to compare it with other ones. But the closer to one, the better. In this case, 74%. It's not far away from one, so we're going to run other models to compare it, right? What else we can see? 
we can see, for example, if certain variables are significant or not. We can see here estimate is a coefficient, and we use these explanatory variables to rewrite median value as a linear combination of those other variables. Okay, let's see. What else? Remember 0 0.73. And we now make some predictions. Why to make some predictions? We need to know how our model predicts new values. Where? Where we're going to pass it new observations. In this case, it's test data. Test data is our validation data. Remember, and then we predict here using model one predict and prediction. Prediction is going to be a vector now with all those predicted values or fit values from our model. As you can see here, prediction is going to be the values for median values. You can see that we have some different values here. And if I didn't mention it, is this is in thousands of dollars, 25,000 in that 70s, okay? Perfect. Now let's see the performance. Once we have predict and fit certain values, we can check the performance of our model. You can see here we have two different metrics that are important in regression. The root mean square error. The root mean square error is trying to compare the observed value, the test data in this case, minus the prediction. That means what are those values fitted by the model for these new observations. And the R square I already discussed is for calculating how much can I explain of the variance of my problem. And you can see data here. Remember, in the, the R square for our model was 0 0.73. Let's see for testing. Oh, 75. 75, around 75. For you guys, it can change a little bit, maybe. It depends on the seat you use when you are fitting the model and calling created a partition. As you can see here, we need to know and compare the root mean square error, 4.23. Keep in mind that. And remember, these values are close. The R square for testing, the R square for training are similar. So we can say, OK, my model is doing fine. It's not overfit or underfitted. So we can continue. However, when we are talking about linear regression, we have to be very careful in two things. Diagnostic, that means there are some assumptions when you use linear regression, normality, homocysticity, and more. In the previous video, we discussed this, so I'm going to leave you a link in the description below. The other one is multicollinearity. As I mentioned before, multicollinearity is that we have variables that are explained the same, so that model can be not trustable at all. So, okay. Can I trust my model? That's what we have to detect now. The variables, or certain variables, are explained the same. If I get rid of one variable, maybe the model will not change at all. Is it good? Yes. It's better to have less variables to explain the same. Let's see now. Multicolonality. Then, how are we going to measure that? Well, for that, we're going to use the library card. And we're going to use the function BIF. BIF stands for Variance Inflation Factor. That's the function name, and we're going to use to check that variance. Is, are the variables explained the same? Okay. And what are the decisions in this case? Well, if this BIF is greater than 5, we have multiple Shall I check? Okay. Which variables have a BIF greater than 5? I can check that is right, for example, and tax. Hmm. Okay. What is this saying? Well, that right and tax are very correlated. Because we only have two. That's easy to understand that right and tax are highly correlated. If I get rid of one, the model will not suffer too much change. We're gonna be able to explain MEV, the median house price, with less variables. The thing is, which one I have to choose, right or tax? Let's see, for example, correlation, linear correlation, Pearson correlation between the explanatory variables, right tax, and the outcome. You can see here, we can check two things. We can check that tax and right are highly correlated, as we discussed before, 0 0.92. They are highly correlated. 
What else? Okay, we can see the relationship between wrap tax with median value. Which variable do I have to keep? Well, the variable that explains better the answer, the outcome. As you can see here, tax has a correlation of 0 0.43, negative. That means that it's going in the opposite direction than met. The higher the tax, that's going to reduce the median value. Okay, that's linear correlation, right? Think about a plot where in the x-axis is increased and the other variable is going down. Like that. Uh, and rad is negative too, but with a less Pearson co coefficient. Mm. Do I have to get rid of rad? Yes. That's going to be the answer with this information. But let's see the summary again. You can see something super interesting in the summary of model one is that both variables are significant. You can see here that rad is significant because this is a p-value. Look at this. And rad2. Both are significant now in the model one, huh? even with the multicollinearity. Mm. But the problem is they are explaining the same. So I have to get rid of one. In this case, I, I mentioned to get rid of rat. As you can see, rat has a p-value even smaller than tax. The coefficient is not so important because that is related to the magnitude of the numbers we are talking about in this feature. Mm, okay. As you can see, you can create a heat map if you want to. Here, for example, this one has, because they are close to one, of course. And tax and rat are around 0 0.5. But tax and rat are highly correlated. That's why this one is in red. And around 0 0.92. Then, what is the next step? Well, the next step, we're going to exclude certain variables. In this case, is rat. And we have to rerun a model without that variable. Then, we come here. LM for linear model again. All the variables, but that negative sign is for get rid of this variable, right? Right is not going to be taken into account, and I'm using this notation because I don't want to write all the variables, the other variables, okay? Train data, and model crew, and summary. How to compare the models? By the matrix. Let's see, round two. Okay, remember that we had 0.72 for our model one in the R square. And let's check here that model two is similar. Then I'm fitting two models and they have the same or almost exactly the same R square. With less variables, that's great because I can use less variables to explain a phenomenon, right, no? And what happened with tax system significant? Check this, it changed. It is not significant. Once we have removed RAD, now the model change, the coefficient change, the p-values for all the variables, indicating us if they are significant or not, have, have changed too. That's great. The next, of course, could, it could be select variables. And we can compare in a model three, model four, with the results of the performance among them. And let's, let's check for the performance for our model 2. We have here prediction, model 2, predict, using the validation set. And what's the performance? Remember, it was 0 0.74. The R square for our model 2 in the validation set. And now let's see. Cool. It's almost the same. 0 0.73. 73% 73% 74% with one less variable. It's great. And check the root mean square error. It's similar. 4.3. It's similar to the model one. What are the conclusions? That we apply multicollinearity and we can explain the outcome with less variables and the performance doesn't change. What's next? Well, the next could be select the variables, of course, test if the assumptions are met or not, and we also call standardization. I'm going to give you some links in the description where we discuss all these topics.
See you next time talking about more linear regression in R. Bye.